r slash ask reddit redditors who are clearly not the favorite child how did that affect you i was about to complain about how my brother just had more photo albums and toys when he was little but that was it but scrolling through all of the posts scares me about these people's parents pisses me off i was quiet shy and didn't bother anybody my brother on the other hand was a complete a-hole and always tried to get into fights with me. I would be doing my homework and he would come up behind me and try to slam my head on the table. He'd tackle me unprovoked and beat the crap out of me for no reason. I tried everything I could to get away from him. If my parents were going to the store, I'd go to bed if he hopped in the car, I'd get out. This would sometimes lead to comical situations where I'd get in. He'd get in. So I'd get out and he'd get out and repeat but that's getting off topic. Anyways, they gave him all the good stuff. They fixed up his room and gave him an AC while you could see the 2x4s in my room and no AC. Before that though, we shared a bedroom and then when it came time to separate, he got to keep all the electronics. He had a radio, game consoles, TV. I had nothing for a few months. My parents acted like it was my fault but he would start so many fights that my parents decided that they couldn't take it anymore so they told us to not talk to each other. Something we have done for the last 16 years. He has mental health problems. My dad realized it but my mom pretends like it doesn't exist and she shuts down anyone who tries to say otherwise. Went the overcompensation route. The favorite sibling died. And I'm still not enough compared to him. Him dying now places him on this angelic pedestal even though he literally did nothing with his life and straight up stole money from my parents. My father gave a speech at my wedding in which he spoke of my stubbornness and how not everybody has to excel in life to be happy and apparently I am one of those. I just remember thinking why couldn't he find something I am good at to talk about instead of all the things I tried and failed at. Cripplingly low self esteem. I don't blame my brother at all. In fact we have a really great relationship. He's one of my all time favorite people. He notices the differences too and doesn't think it's fair. I'm just the scapegoat. Straight up. I always got the sense my sister was my mum's favorite. And I was my dad's. When my dad left, well it was nothing major. But it is frustrating knowing she will always get the benefit of the doubt and get more leeway. Then again, if my dad visits, it is kinda awkward watching the opposite happen. I am a middle child and between two sisters, each approximately a year apart from me. My mother always preferred girls to boys, and as such would treat me as always in the wrong. This went as far as to when she would catch them in the act of doing something wrong, would punish me instead. This culminated into what I like to refer to as kicking me out of the house when I was 10 years old. In essence she called one of her ex-husbands, not my father and a rather nasty divorce, and told him that if he didn't come and take me in, she was putting me into a boy's home. So this man uplifted his life from the several states away that he moved and took me in for a few months. I was then bounced from house to house until I landed a semi-permanent residence with one of my aunts. Too long didn't read least favorite child and got kicked out of the house at 10 years old. Favorably for the most part. Except if things went wrong and I was nearby it was my fault. As the oldest of 5 I developed dad reflexes long before my time. I try to have a sense of humor about it and call myself the black sheep I think deep down it hurts but I truly just think my parents don't understand me or my interests and I've come to realize they love me but just don't relate as well. This is me, my mom was always wonderful to me, but she passed away 7 years ago, right as I was becoming an adult. My dad doesn't get me, and it really sucks basically not having parents. I come from a highly religious, southern family. When I was young, I was very sheltered and hyper religious. I had a lot of profound religious experiences, was homeschooled, and was my mom's only child. My dad has another son from a previous marriage. When my parents split, things were fine for a while. They remained friends, and I still had a great relationship with them. My dad and I bonded over video games. He'd pull out his Windows 2000 laptop and joystick and we'd play Macquarie 4. Or I'd bring over my N64 and we'd play Mario Kart. It was great, and that time 16 years ago was the closest to him I have ever felt. But eventually both of my parents started rebuilding their lives. I was living with my mom, 
and she went through a series of bad marriages trying to find a man who would be good to her. Eventually, I got in an argument with my mom and asked to live with my dad. She let me. Teenage angst one, I guess. So I moved in with my dad, and things were good. It was the two of us against the world. But then he met a woman, and he changed. He stopped putting effort into me, and it got worse when they married. I talked about it with her two daughters and they saw change in their mom. 2. I was also starting public school for the first time after a whole life of homeschooling. It was really hard. Socially, and that was the perfect storm. This new version of my dad didn't have time to play games with me. He started paying a lot of attention to my stepsisters. The younger one was the bubbly cheerleader. The older one got pregnant from her shitty boyfriend at the time. So I did what any nerdy kid does. I started finding something to do in my room. I turned to the internet, reading everything I could about anything available to me, and I slowly began to realize that I couldn't believe in the religion I was raised with. I couldn't live a lie like that, but I also knew it would crush my dad. So I kept quiet. I was 15 at the time. I also started getting into online gaming, specifically World of Warcraft. I was so excited. This game was amazing. I tried to show my dad, and he acted like it was a waste of time. I didn't understand what had changed. I still don't to this day. We got in so many fights where he labeled me as a computer addict and told me I was wasting my time and ruining my life. That I was such a disappointment. And so on. I just retreated inward more. Cut ahead a bunch of years. I'm still non-religious and out about it to my family. My dad doesn't really know how to act around me anymore. I guess he thinks he can't trust a non-Christian. So he just keeps any conversations with me to smell talk. Those old father-son chats where we were thick as thieves are just memories. I was still called an addict until the day I left. And nowadays I'm a software developer making more money 2 years into my career than my dad did with 15 years of seniority with his. Despite having no college education and learning everything myself. Yet. I've never heard I'm proud of you. Son. Sometimes I get a monotono. That's good. And I try to savor those. But it's not the same. Whenever we do talk, I hear all about my sisters and their families. Their accomplishments working at Kmart or being a stay-at-home mom. Or their new husbands. Or about my older brother down in Florida. And all the stuff he's got going on and how he's doing so well. Meanwhile, he never asks about my job or my girlfriend of 3 years. And actually gets her name wrong most of the time unless I say it first. I've been trying to reconnect with him, assuming he just like, Ricky Bobby doesn't know what to do with his hands, so I ask him to game with me, since we live in different states now. I asked him once in like March 2016 and was told he was too busy. I asked again around September 2016 and was told that it'll need to wait till after the new year. I asked him in February 2017 to let him know when he has time. Then after not hearing from him, I asked him a week after my birthday last month and was told it needs to wait until after the new year. I'm just tired of not having a dad, and being disappointed, and on the back burner. Since my mom's passing, I'm basically an orphan, except I have a father. He just pretends to care enough to make himself feel good and that's it. I need a therapist. Edit. Just realized it's his birthday. I guess I should call him. My mom was abusive towards me, but never towards my brother. Thankfully, when it came to getting attention from her I only knew negative and thought it was strange when we would be around the rest of the family and she was nice towards me as I only knew her beating the shit out of me. As I got older, I looked for affection from anywhere I could get it, which was usually older boys. Whenever she saw anyone treating me well. She did whatever she could to ruin it. After years of abuse from her I finally decided to cut eyes with her and I've been incredibly happy the past 5 years. Edit. For those of you asking. Sadly my brother and I don't have a relationship anymore. I was 18 when when I moved out and my mother changed. She didn't have me to beat on so he saw a different side of her. I moved back to Oregon and we got close quickly. One of the reasons was because of my daughter. As I said earlier I looked for affection from anyone I could get it from and as a result of my actions I became a teen mother. He helped me a lot with my oldest and wanted to be around her. After a few years we both managed to forgive our mother. But in different ways. 
He forgave her and pretty much started a new relationship with her. I forgave her and cut ties completely. It was honestly one of the best and most exhilarating things I've done. Cutting ties completely with her caused some tension between my brother and he thought I was overreacting. Due to this we have lost touch with each other. I've tried to reach out to him throughout the years. But he keeps bringing up a relationship with her and tells me it's not fair to keep her grandchildren away from her. So we no longer talk. When my stepmother came in the picture, I became the middle of 5. Great grades all throughout high school. AP classes. Got directly into my college's honor school. But I don't know. I guess because I didn't come out of my stepmother's vagina. I was always the problem child. Always accused of doing drugs and drinking. Even though it was completely without basis and out of left field. There was a whole structure of abuse that I can't even begin to explain. Hitting. Isolation. Manipulation. Withheld food. Etc. I basically spent high school locked in my bedroom. So I probably spent an unhealthy amount of time online. Focused on doing good in school so I could get myself the hell out of there. Later discovered my stepmom was a classic narcissist and it explained everything. I've since gone no contact her and my dad. I was born shortly after World War II to a war broken father and clueless mother. Who tried hard to raise a son. But was misguided by Dr. Spark and parenting practices that were prevalent at the time. As a result. Corporal punishment was liberally applied. Even as an infant. And I grew into a resentful. Hostile toddler. Then my sister was born. Sugar and spice. And everything nice what a crock. It took me over 50 years to figure out that I had no support or goodwill from my parents and sister. Ultimately. I cut all ties with them. Parents are now deceased. And sister has been completely out of my life for years. I do not miss them. And I'm grateful for the few years I have left to examine. And maybe fix. Some of the damage they did to me. Edited. The corporal punishment part came from the grandparents plus prevailing child rearing wisdom of the time. Dr. Spark. Who was not a Vulcan. Focused in part on mitigating against attention getting behaviors. Edit 2. Come on folks. I only mentioned Spark because his book. And cultural practices. Were pretty much everything anyone had for raising kids. Seen against that background. My mother's actions. Although damaging in many ways. Are understandable. Likewise. My father's need to see new life. And his continuation beyond the horrors and death he witnessed. Yet I didn't have a good time. All I ever heard was. Oh well Brian won a ski competition and looks like he's getting engaged. I wish you would be more like your cousin. He's a very good kid. Well duck I'm an only child and I'm still not the favorite. I was the mistake of two stupid teenagers. My bio dad ran away to another country, Arabian, and my bio mom had me and then dumped me on my grandma. My mom then married an abusive a-hole and had three other kids with him that were two five years younger than me. My grandma was a widower that worked as a cleaner all her life. She had so little but she tried her best. We were super poor until she passed away from a heart attack when I was 8. I then rejoined my mom was promptly cast as the black sheep. My mom's husband had a small successful building company and they lived in a big mansion type house with a pool. My half siblings had the latest toys. Participated in all sorts of after school activities and had their own rooms. I was allowed to sleep in a sleeping bag in the lounge. I had to look for a job and use it all to pay board since the age of 13. I wasn't allowed to have any friends over or do anything. I had to go to the local school whilst my siblings went to some fancy pants prestigious school. I mostly spent my days in the library reading, studying and participating in free activities. I would also volunteer a lot as that was more fun than working and they couldn't tell me not to do it. They were good Christians. I would basically wake up at 6am, do my chores, paper route other odd jobs, exercise. Eat fruit for breakfast then go to school then go to work extracurricular free crap spend time in the library until it was 8pm then go home. Do the other chores I had left. Eat leftovers and sleep. Due to this routine. I ended up doing well at school and getting multiple offers for full rides through college. My guidance counselor. Some teachers and close friends families knew of my situation and helped me a lot by taking me for holidays. Helping me get organized for college etc. In the end I got a good job. 
started a successful business and am way ahead of any of my siblings. My siblings treated me like complete trash and ignored me for most of my youth. Probably coached by my mom and stepdad. The GFC really killed my stepdad's business and the whole family became dirt poor. My business prospered under the GFC and now I make enough money that I don't have to work if I don't want it. It's not so surprising how everyone suddenly remembers you are family when in a crisis after ignoring you for most of your life. I'm currently 33 and very happy with myself. I don't have any family in my eyes and the experiences I have had has made it difficult for me to open up to anyone completely and be vulnerable so relationships are difficult for me. However, this experience has taught me discipline, self-reliance, independence and drive which has helped me in my business career life plus physical health. I have a very small group of tight friends and that's enough for me. I am in therapy trying to get myself to open up more. Hopefully one day I will have a family of my own. Middle child here. All I ever wanted to do was be a drummer. Parents wouldn't allow me to have a kit. Switched over to guitar instead and asked for lessons since they had invested in years of piano lessons for my sibling sisters. Wouldn't allow it. Eventually moved to LA. Started a band. Got a record deal. Had a video on MTV. And a billboard top 40 active rock song. Turns out, I didn't need their support of my aspirations after all. I still want to be a drummer though. Colon. I was told once in a very serious situation that I am the favorite child and I resented my parents a lot for it. I felt horrible for my siblings and of course never wanted them to find out for fear of how they would feel. I'm the oldest by 4 years. My younger sister and younger brother are only a year apart in age. I find that most of my parents friends and colleagues have no idea I even exist. I often get the I didn't know you had another daughter. Or they will call me by my younger sister's name when we first meet. My response is always I'm the one they don't talk about. I actually don't care. My parents and I have never really gotten along. My mother is a narcissist. My father is an alcoholic. I'm the only child that ever had the wherewithal to tell them no or to make choices for myself. I'm also the most successful of the three. By far. Personally. Financially. I've made decisions that put me on a path of growth. Because I wasn't waiting for my mother to make decisions for me. She was only ever concerned with what people think. So now people get to think that she's the parent of two pretty unsuccessful children. Instead of adding in that third one she might actually be able to brag about. If I had any sort of emotional attachment to them I might feel differently. But they're just people to me. I have the same feelings for them that I have for any stranger. I overcompensated and insisted on being perfect. Even if my family didn't recognize it. As a result I am the most successful of my siblings by far. Both financially and personally. Now the script has flipped and they hate me because I have so much more than them. Moral of the story is you can't control what people think of you. So make your life what you want it to be. My parents just say I'm more independent than my younger sister. The baby of the family. We were both adopted and I never felt like I really connected with family the way she does. I moved out as soon as I turned 18 and now I talk to my parents as an adult. And we get along much better. Some people you can take in small doses. And I guess that's how my parents feel about me. Because that's how I feel about them. Bro. You made it to the end. You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price. 